Hi everyone, I'm Jen Lucas, knit and crochet designer, and I wanna welcome you to today's live event for the Knitting Circle. We are going to be knitting the Summer Vibes dishcloth. It's this one right here. It's so bright and cheery. Um, and you know, it's a dishcloth, so it is great for practicing the techniques that we're going to be doing in this pattern today, which is doing the log cabin square. Um, and so if you're not familiar, a log cabin square, you typically see it in quilting. So, you know, you make a whole quilt out of these types of squares, but you can also knit and crochet them too. And so I thought it would just be really fun just to use some of my leftover dishcloth cotton that I have, because I feel like there's always a little bit of it left that you can save. Like it's too much to like, just be like, oh, whatever, and throw it out or, you know, donate it somewhere. Um, but it's not necessarily enough to make a whole nother dishcloth. So I thought that this was a really great use of the leftovers so that um, you can kind of just mix and match your colors however you want. I used uh, a total of three colors here, but it's really up to you. You could do whatever you want. Um, and then at the end, we're going to add a single crochet border around the um, outside edge. I just think it finishes it off um, really nice. And if you hate crocheting or you don't have a crochet hook, don't worry, that part is totally optional. Um, but I actually love to add crochet uh, around the edges of my knitting. So I thought that this would be a great project to show you how to do that too. Um, don't forget before we get started on the instructions to go ahead and download the pattern for today. Again, it's the Summer Vibes Dishcloth. You'll see a QR code on the bottom of your screen wherever you're watching and you can take a picture uh, with your phone camera to go directly to the site to download your pattern. We also have a link in the description wherever you are watching, and we also will be dropping that link in the chat as well. So be sure to download your Summer Vibes dishcloth pattern so that once I've shown you all the steps here in today's live stream, you'll be able to make one for yourself. And uh, I mentioned that chat box uh, just a second ago. If you have any questions for me along the way, go ahead and drop those in the chat box, and I will get to as many as I can. You can also use that chat box to um, let us know your ideas about this dishcloth. If you, um, you know, have different ideas on how you can make it your own, let us know in the chat. Um, also say hello, let us know where you're watching from. We love to know all those types of things. Um, even how long you've been knitting, what projects you like to knit. Don't be afraid to use that chat box. We love hearing from you during these live streams. So let's go ahead and we'll get the camera turned down and we will get started in talking about the materials we're going to need. So again, for this particular dishcloth, I did three colors. So here I have three different colors that I'll be using today because I did use most of my leftovers on this actual one. But I found these three here. I even have this pink over here too. I guess we could throw in if we want. But these are literally just leftovers from various other projects. Um, you know, many of these balls of yarn um come with like uh these particular ones were 190 yards per skein um and the most we're going to need is 36 yards and that's going to be for color c so you can see um if you um do have leftovers you don't really need very much so you're going to need um 33 yards of your color a 26 yards of your color b and 36 yards of your color c um and you know i always buffer those a little bit you might be able to get away with a little bit less depending um you know also it will depend on your gauge because i know nobody's going to check their gauge for a dishcloth um but the point here is that really you just need that worsted weight dishcloth cotton leftovers are great um you know and if you run out of one you can just grab a different color out of your stash um you know it would even be great to buy um whole skeins um you know if you don't have a lot of leftovers think about buying um you know maybe three or four balls of the dishcloth cotton dishcloth cotton in general is very inexpensive um and you could even make like a set of these dishcloths or then you would have like a nice set of yarn that goes together that you could use some other dishcloth patterns uh, with. And we do have a couple other dishcloth patterns uh, here on the Knitting Circle. So you can go ahead and check out our free patterns page um, if you like to check out some of those other dishcloths that you can make if you do have whole skeins that you're using. Um, so then in addition to this, we're just going to, you know, need the usual things. Um, we're going to need a knitting needle, US size 7. Um, here I have a circular needle. This is a 16 inch circular. Um, I just prefer even when I'm knitting back and forth in rows to knit on a circular needle. You certainly could use, you know, your standard straight um, knitting needles as well. I just am using the 16 inch circular because that's personally what I like. 
You're also going to need a crochet hook. And I just grabbed a couple here. Here we go. Um, the pattern calls for a size seven, 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. And this is the one I have here. I have another one here. I think this one might be a little bit smaller though. Yeah, this one's actually 3.25, quite a bit smaller. I just grabbed a couple. Really, um, you know, this is something where you, if you have some crochet hooks at home, you don't necessarily need to go out and get the exact size crochet hook. The crochet hook is 4.5 millimeters and we have the size seven knitting needle, which is also 4.5 millimeters. So obviously these are the same size. Um, but you just want something close. So even if you find, you know, you can only find a four millimeter hook or a five millimeter hook, you can make it work. And we can talk a little bit about when we're doing our single crochet at the end, um, you know, how if you need to start fudging things in that um, single crochet border, we absolutely can do that if your um, hook size is a little bit different. Um, you might want some stitch markers here. Um, I of course, like the plastic locking ones are the ones I'm always using in these videos. I have one here. Um, and then I just have a few over here. Um, this is totally optional and is really only if you want to mark the right side of your work. So I actually left my stitch marker in here. Um, this is the bottom right corner of where I started. So this is my cast on edge here. So um, you might want a stitch marker to mark the right side of your work because here if we flip it over this is the wrong side and you can see it does have a right side and a wrong side because where we're picking up along the sides you are you know getting the other colors poking through um so it is in my opinion kind of easy to tell the right side from the wrong side but it's also going to depend on your color choices um, so again, having that lacking stitch marker is just nice because you can just stick it on the right side and then you know that's always the right side of your work. And then of course, you're just gonna need, you know, kind of the usual things, the tapestry needle to weave in our ends and then some scissors, of course, to cut our yarn. Um, let's see, we have Krista saying hi from sunny Charleston, South Carolina. Hi, uh, hi Krista, I'm so glad you could join us today. Okay, so to get started, um, we're just going to simply cast on um, stitches and you can use really whatever cast on you like. I just usually use a long tail cast on because that's what I use for um, a lot of projects. So we'll just go ahead and do that here. Um, we will be picking up stitches eventually in that cast on edge. So just keep that in mind. Um, I find it, I have no problem picking up stitches in a cast on edge so um, that where I've used the long tail cast on. So that's what I like to use. But if you have another uh, cast on that you like to use, um, especially when you have to um, pick up stitches in that cast on edge, you can go ahead and use that. Um, I maybe just here would not use like the backwards loop or backwards E cast on um, or cursive E cast on just um, because that I do think it's a little bit loose and I, you can pick up stitches in it, and I actually am working on a project um, where I have done that. Um, but um, I just think overall, this is just a little bit sturdier and a little bit easier to pick up your stitches. So for the pattern itself, you're going to cast on 20. Um, here, I'm just gonna do 10 because um, we are just knitting a lot of garter stitch, but you'll be following um, the pattern, which will tell you to cast on 20 stitches. But again, here, I'm just going to do 10, 2, 5, 7, 10. There we go. Kind of gave myself an extra long tail there. So let's just uh, trim that so I don't accidentally start knitting with it. Not that that's going to actually stop me, right? We all knit from, from the tail sometimes. Okay, so then we're working, because I did the long tail cast on, that creates a uh, right side row. And so my next row is a wrong side row where I'm just gonna knit all the stitches. And then you're just going to keep knitting every single row for the specified number of rows in the pattern. So we do this one wrong side row, and then we just simply knit 38 more rows. So let's just do a couple more here. So what ends up happening by working that number of rows is we cast on and basically knit 39 rows. Um, it ends up giving you 20 garter ridges. So we cast on 20 stitches and then knit until we have 20 garter ridges. 
So let me just finish off this wrong side row and let's talk about that. Okay, so again, here I just have 10, you'll have 20 on yours. Um, let me just grab a knitting needle, another one so I can just point, here we go. Okay, so when I'm talking about the garter ridges, I'm talking about these ridges here, these little, sometimes they're also called pearl ridges or pearl bumps, garter bumps, they go by a lot of different names. Um, but each one of these, I kind of count it as two rows because your right side row is really in between the two garter bumps here. And if you kind of pull them apart, you can see the V's of the knit stitch, but then the pearl bumps or garter bumps are created by knitting on the wrong side. So every time you see a row of the garter bumps, that represents basically two rows. So here we have two garter ridges. So again, in, in the actual pattern, you'd have 20 stitches cast on and you would go until you have 20 of these garter ridges and then you would be ready to work a right side row. And so by doing that in general, um, garter stitch can be pretty square um, as far as if you're just, you know, knitting back and forth. And you could see this is, it's, mine came out a little bit more rectangular than a square. It actually looks more rectangular in the video than it does in person. I think it might just be the angle. Um, but that's just a gauge thing. I am a loose knitter, so mine did come out a hair longer than wider. Um, but ideally, you're going for a square here. Um, and, you know, that would give you a square dishcloth, um, which we do roughly have here. If we take a look quickly at the finished me measurements, I got eight and a half inches wide and then nine inches tall. And again, that's just because of um, the fact that my particular gauge, it just, um, this part ended up being a little bit longer. Um, but essentially you end up with more or less a square at the center. And so here I have a just little swatch where I just did the 10 stitches and I uh, worked to the point where I have 10 garter ridges. So basically just what we did on the dishcloth, just on a much smaller scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I have 10 garter ridges. And so now you are we are gonna bind off and then start the first side of our dishcloth. So for the log cabin, so we started here at our cast on edge and then we worked back and forth in rows. And then this is the end here where we're gonna bind off. So we're gonna bind off this way and then we're gonna join our next color and then work this little part here along the side. And then we're just gonna basically keep repeating that around and around and around until our dishcloth is done. So this one has, you know, four sides. Um, but again, this is something you could play around with. You don't have to do, um, I ended up doing, uh, the sides so that each one had eight garter, eight garter ridges. Um, and that was just so it would work out to make a nice dishcloth size. But you could play around um, with the number of rows you're working here, um, you know, and make a, make a dishcloth all your own. But let's talk about the dishcloth that we have in the actual project. So once you have your specified number of rows with your color A, we're just gonna bind off until one stitch remains. So in your pattern, you're binding off a total of 19. And I'm just using a regular bind off where I'm knitting a stitch. So I have two stitches on my right needle and then I'm passing the first stitch over the second and then just keep going. And we're just gonna keep binding off in that manner until one stitch remains. Now, one thing I did notice is that um, because we're gonna have one stitch remaining in our color A, but then we're gonna start working along the side. This is such a minute little detail. Um, some of these I noticed that I didn't necessarily love like how the pink here is kind of poking out here. So if that's something that's gonna bother you, I decided like, I didn't love it, but it, I'm also like, this is a dishcloth. So, you know, does it does it really matter? No, because this is utilitarian. I'm going to put this in my kitchen once I'm done with this live. Um, but if that little like speck of color there is gonna bother you, 
Um, we're about to cut color A and join color B. You could actually um, knit this last stitch in your color B, bind off that last stitch so then this stitch is in your color B. Again, I don't, I don't think I care that much. So uh, maybe we'll do it um, further along in the project. We can um, talk about how that might work. So oh, these scissors are not great. There we go. Okay, so now we've cut our color B, or our, excuse me, our color A. And now we're going to pick up and knit along the side edge. Let's get some things out of the way here. And let's see, for our color B, let's bring in the gray. And so let me find an end. Okay, so we're going to turn our piece 90 degrees clockwise. So you're turning it like from here. This is how we were knitting it. We're going to turn it 90 degrees clockwise so that this edge is what we're going to be working into. Now, our pattern says to pick up and knit with color B 19 stitches in between the garter ridges. And so you can you can pick up the ridge itself or go in between, but I, I do like to go in between. I think it's a little bit neater. So now I'm just going to go in between the ridge like this. And then let's get the yarn here. Probably should have rewound this ball. It's kind of getting a little loose on me there. That's okay. Okay. So now we have our one stitch. We're going to go in between two garter ridges here. I'm just going to take a loop of yarn, leaving a tail, stick it on the needle to pick up and knit. So we're going to pick up and knit along the side. Again, your pattern uh, for the actual whole dishcloth is going to be 19 stitches here. I'm just going to pick up nine because I have this just little tidy swatch. So that was three, four. And I'm just going under, I'm going under two bars there. Two bars, hopefully you can see that, yeah. And pick up and knit. And you'll notice that this is a little loose over here, these stitches, but that's okay. When we come back to weave in the ends later, we'll be able to tighten those up. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So just like that. And so we have our total of then 10 stitches here in your pattern. You will once again have 20 stitches. So then in the pattern, you would just knit in garter stitch, which is knitting every row for 15 rows, which is going to give you eight garter ridges. So we'll just knit a couple here so we can start to see what this will look like. And you can see I'm just I'm just tugging on these tails when I come to them to tighten them up a bit. And then again, we can we can tighten everything up a little more um, when we go to weave in the ends if we need to. So you're just knitting, knitting, knitting. And this is see, this is the kind of project I really love because I am somebody that absolutely adores garter stitch. It's like I could just I seriously think I could just only do the knit stitch for the rest of my life and I'd be perfectly fine because you can make anything with it. Um, and it's so squishy and cozy. And I just, I don't know why garter stitch makes me happy, but it really, <laughs> truly it does. Um, and so what I like about this project is, yeah, garter stitch can get a little bit boring, you know, when you're just knitting every single stitch for your entire project. So uh, what I really love about the log cabin squares that you can make or projects you can make is that, yes, you are just always knitting, but you are getting a little bit of interest by we're going to be binding off, picking up stitches, changing colors. So, um, you know, this for me is really the perfect kind of project. Um, you see a lot of projects um, involving um, baby blankets or even full size afghans um, that involve the log cabin squares. Um, you know, you can do all sorts of things with them. You could join them together to make a placemat. You could um, if you started at the center and worked additional rows and made the start a rectangle, um, 
like a longer rectangle. And then again, you would just pick up in all the in between the garter ridges on the side, you could make a dish towel, um, you know, so they don't have to be square, you can um, use the log cabin style or technique, but you don't necessarily have to make a square. Which is something really cool. I actually recently uh, used this for crochet, uh, the log cabin technique. And I, um, again, used just my leftover dishcloth cotton because I have a lot of it. And um, I made just like this little runner um, for my windowsill for my um, indoor plants to sit on. And it's so cute. And it, and I, again, I crocheted it. I just used single crochet for the whole thing. Um, but you could certainly do this in knitting as well. Um, okay, so you would just, again, keep knitting back and forth until you have your eight garter ridges. Here we have three. Um, but, uh, you know, you would keep going until you had the eight. And so I did make one over here where I think I did just four since my swatch is smaller. So one, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. So you will knit your uh, side for the specified number of rows, which is 15 rows. And then once again, you're going to bind off until one stitch remains. So this time we'll join the new color on that last stitch just to see what that looks like. So just binding off, binding off, binding off. Okay. So now we have two stitches left. We're going to bind off one more. And now let's grab our color C, which I think I'm going to use this like sort of light teal color. And we will join it on that last stitch. Again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do it this way. Um, but again, this is just something if you want to, um, you know, clean up that that corner where we're going to then be turning and picking up the stitches. That's something um, that you can try. So let's go ahead and try it here. All right. So I have my two stitches remaining. So we would have one on our left needle and then one on our right needle. So we need to knit this last stitch on our left needle. So I'm just going to join the yarn here and then knit that last stitch with the new yarn and pass it over. And then we can cut our gray yarn, which is our color B, because now we've joined our color C. And so, yes, you are going to end up with some ends to weave in on this, because if you think about it, color A here, which is the orange, we don't use it again till way over here. Yellow and yellow, these are really far away from each other. And so it's sort of this coral color. So with this technique, you do end up with quite a few ends to weave in, but that's okay. All right, so then you're ready to work your color C. And so for your color C, again, you're just gonna do exactly what the pattern tells you. But first you're going to pick up and knit the number uh, of stitches in between these ridges. So what we're doing now is we're picking up along this side edge, the side edge of this one, our color B. So we're doing that. And then once we get to the original square we made, we are going to pick up and knit the number of stitches it specifies, which in the pattern is 20, into each stitch in the cast on edge. And so again, all I'm doing is taking my right needle, going under two strands of that cast on edge, and pulling through a loop. And so you would just do that all the way down. And this is one of those things where, um, you know, if you have miscounted your stitches, um, you know, as long as you've picked up evenly across here, it's really not gonna be that big of a deal. Um, the only thing you'll have to keep in mind is, you know, if you were gonna continue to make this bigger, if this did inspire you to make a different type of project, um, you just have to keep in mind that maybe your stitch count was a little bit different. But the nice thing about when you're picking up and knitting stitches is if you don't like something, like let's just say I don't like those last couple of stitches, We'll just like pull those four out and you can rip it just right back out. It's just like crochet in that way um, that when you're doing that pick up and knit, it's very easy just to um, literally um, rip it back out if you don't like how something looks. 
Okay, so then you have your uh, stitches picked up on the next side. And then once again, you are going to just knit your 15 rows. So I'm going to just knit a couple of rows here. Um, and then we'll talk about um, sort of how the construction for the rest of the uh, dishcloth is going to work. And then we'll also talk about doing that. And I'll demonstrate how to do the uh, single crochet edge. So uh, we're about halfway through our time here. So I just want to remind everybody, if you haven't done so already, uh, be sure to download the pattern. We've popped the QR screen. QR code back up on the screen for you. And um, also you can get the link in the description wherever you are watching. So you can make your own dishcloth yourself. Um, and again, I think that this is a really fun one. I think that this would be really fun to do in these summer colors and, you know, um, you know, maybe take it for a gift or something. If you have uh, any kind of like party or event to go to this summer, I think, um, this would be really great. I know when I was in the period of my life when all of my friends were getting married, um, I knit a lot of dishcloths um, as uh, bridal shower gifts. I would try to, you know, give some, give my friends something a little handmade, um, you know, as they were starting off their new life uh, getting married. So, um, yeah, I think that these make really great gifts because you don't have to worry about if they're going to fit somebody and, um, you know, everybody could use some new dishcloths, right? And they're not just, you don't have to use them just for, um, you know, in the kitchen. You can use these, um, you know, if you uh, like the feeling of them, you could, you know, use them as uh, like face cloths, things like that. Um, you can even make a smaller version, use them as like a makeup remover. Um, they have all sorts of uses besides just in your kitchen. Okay, so let's just do one more row and then I'm just going to bind off all of these stitches and then we'll talk about how to um, continue on. I think that something that could be really interesting too is if you're feeling really adventurous you could even stripe some of these blocks of color you can make some really some really interesting effects I think if you um, you know maybe striped your colors every two rows um, or four rows um, if you used a variegated yarn um, I did almost use a variegated yarn for this that I had but I just didn't have enough of the coordinating colors where I thought it was going to work but I think it all worked out for the best because this just to me looks so summery and I'm just so ready for summer I don't know about the rest of you and also um, you know, if you don't mind uh, chiming in on the chat box, I would love to know uh, if you knit in the summertime, what you like to knit in the summertime. Because um, I know that for me, I'm knitting a lot less just because I'm, you know, out doing stuff a lot more. Um, but I'm very curious. I, I do tend to um, still be knitting, but just not quite as much. And I do like smaller projects, um, shawls and things like that, even though I don't necessarily need to wear a shawl in the summertime, you know, but um, it is nice to uh, knit them in the summer because they don't take up a lot of space on your lap usually. Okay, so I'm just, again, I'm binding off this whole thing, um, but you would just continue on in the same manner as uh, the pattern indicates. So again, you would have uh, one stitch remaining here, and then you would pick up along this side and then into the side of this across here, you would knit your eight rows and then turn it again. And then you would be picking up in the side here, picking up the stitches here, picking up the side here, and then that's gonna make your fourth edge. Um, and so that's all there is to um, doing the actual log cabin part of it itself. Once you've worked the fourth, um, the fourth stripe here so the fourth stripe will be this one here at the top you're simply going to bind off all the stitches on the right side just like i did here on this little piece all your stitches will be bound off um, and then you're ready to do the optional um single crochet border so um you know you might want to weave in all of your ends before you do the crochet border um it's not necessary but um like even here, like I've got this little like loosey goosey thing. So like it might be helpful to um, 
you know, uh, weave in your ends and sort of take care of any of the weirdness where the colors were joined um, before you do your single crochet or not. But I'm going to go ahead and skip that so you don't have to watch me um, weave in a bunch of ends. So um, I'm, I'll actually use this little uh, pink color here since um, I haven't used it yet. And why not use a different color to go around this thing? Okay, so now let's talk crochet. Let's get that crochet hook out. Here we go. And again, don't let this scare you if you haven't crocheted before because this really is not that hard. Um, okay, so first what we're gonna do is take our yarn and we are gonna put a slip knot on our hook, same way that you would do a slip knot in knitting when you were starting your cast on. Leave a tail to weave in later. Make your slip knot, stick it on your hook, just like that and we're ready to go. Now you just can begin in any corner you want. I'll just pick this corner. And I'm going to go under the stitches here, just under two strands. And then I'm going to yarn over this way. So you have the yarn here. You're going to yarn over, pull that loop through to the front. So you have two loops on the hook. And then yarn over and pull through two, just like that. And then you're just going to keep going like that all the way across. And sometimes it will help to have a slightly smaller hook here, just because especially if your bind off's a little bit tight, um, you know, it can be a little hard. And it also will depend on the style of hook you have too, of course. If you've got the head that's a little more pointy, it might be a little bit easier. So again, I've inserted my hook, yarn over, draw through a loop, two loops on hook, yarn over, draw through two. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way down. And so you're just doing sort of a one for one. You're going into each of the stitches in the edge here. And again, with, um, with crochet, it's the same as when we were doing the pickup and knit. So see like how this stitch, I came down a little bit further than the ones next to it. Um, you know, I might not necessarily like that. So I'm just going to take my hook out, pull out those two stitches. Stick my hook back on and just do that one again. So um, that's the really great thing about crochet is that um, once you have um, gotten it down, it really is easy to rip it out. And that is one of the things I like about it um, is that it's very easy to rip out your mistakes. Um, the disadvantage, in my opinion, to crochet is um, you it's like you can't really go back and fix a mistake. There are things you can do to sort of repair your mistakes or cover up your mistakes. Um, but it's not like knitting where you can, you know, drop a few stitches off of um, the needle or off the, um, you know, like in knitting, you could drop a few stitches off the needle and, and ladder those stitches down and fix it. And you can't really do that in crochet because knitting, you have all the active loops for the row on um, on your knitting needle with crochet, you always are getting back to, well, I'm saying always, I mean, it might not be always, but basically almost always you're getting back to your one working loop. See, I've completed a stitch. I have one working loop there. Let's just kind of skip over to this corner because I want to make sure we're talking about the corners here. Okay. So then once you get to the corner, we need to make sure we're getting around that corner. So you can't just simply put one um, stitch into the corner and then go around the edge. So in general, you put three stitches into the corner. So I just went into that same space three times. And then now you'll just keep going down the side. Here where I'm working, um, when I'm working in between the garter ridges, like I'm doing here, I'm going to just go under two strands, just like when I was picking up the stitches with my knitting needle. I'm going under the two strands between the garter ridges, yarn over, draw through a loop, yarn over, draw through two, and then just do that all the way down. And definitely when you're working on the sides where you have gone, um, into the sides of your garter edges, it's much, much easier than when you have to get that hook into the cast on or bind off edge of your piece. And again, if you're like, this is definitely not for me, well, then just leave it off. Again, I just thought that it just kind of 
finished off the dishcloth nicely because even if you pick up your stitches perfectly, um, I feel like sometimes you can see a little bit of gap or almost like a little divot or something where, um, where you switched colors. And so this just kind of makes all of that go away in my opinion. So that's why I like to do it. And that's why I wanted to show it to you. And then here I am at another corner and then I'm just simply putting three single crochets into that corner. And I would just keep going all the way around until I was done. And then I would just have to weave in my ends. Um, I don't really ever, you can, I put in the pattern, you can block, steam block this if you want to. Um, and maybe if you're giving it as a gift, that's something you might want to do. Um, you know, but again, if I'm just going to go throw this in my kitchen after this, I'm, I'm not going to steam block it. I'm just going to use it and then, um, you know, just wash it and dry it like normal. So that's it. Um, that is everything you need to know on how to make the summer, summer vibes dishcloth. I really hope you make this one. Um, it's really fun. It's really quick. Um, I knit this one just in an evening in front of the TV, which is really great. Um, so um, it makes for just a fast, fun project that's perfect for summer. Um, I feel like even when I'm at the pool this summer with my sister and my nieces, um, you know, I'm going to be, uh, you know, sitting under my umbrella and probably knitting a few more of these. I think it's just like the perfect little on the go project to have with you this summer. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to make this. And remember, if you do make one, we'd love to see it. So be sure to tag us on social media or also, you can uh, share your project in our project gallery page on the Knitting Circle website, um, and you can upload any project you want. It doesn't just have to be one that you found here at the Knitting Circle. Um, you can upload your projects and share with the community what you've been working on, and we love to see those as well. So once again, thank you for joining me. I hope that you have fun knitting your Summer Vibes dishcloth, and I'll see you again soon. Happy knitting!